it shouldn't be play to earn. It, it, it's, it should be play and earn. So it should be if you want to earn. Like it shouldn't be the first. The Exorians, our standards are Fortnite, or Rust and, 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 and No Man's Sky. Our, our standards are very high on how fun the game will be. And earning is secondary. This episode of Untold Stories is sponsored by Bing X and Angel Block. You'll hear more about them later on in this episode. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I am your host, Charlie Shrem. What is up? You are listening to Untold Stories, hopefully watching too. Uh, our YouTube videos are, are quite epic and fun. But if not, then you're listening to Untold Stories, uh, where all around the world, you guys, the listeners, me, the host, our guests, our friends, our family, we get to dive deep. Uh, with some of the coolest people in the whole entire world, the most brilliant people, those who are leading our industry forward, running huge studios, also saving the world at the same time, uh, crypto, Bitcoin, everything in between, all different sorts of blockchains, layer ones, layer twos, the fun stories, kind of the events, the thing that happens like now, but how they affect all the future. And to truly understand, you know, I like to go back and use all these, all these early stories from the old days to truly understand how this movement came to be. Today, there's some crazy action happening in the crypto world. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but I want to introduce my guest, Nick Rose. Nick, thank you so much for coming on Untold Stories today. Thank you for having me, uh, Charlie. I really appreciate it. Um, you are the CEO and the, the co-founder of the Eternity chain, the Eternity studio. Um, the, the laboratory that to tons of projects are coming out of right now, uh, Exorians and the whole universe around that. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, you're also the chief digital officer at the Global Wildlife Conservation. Uh, you're, you're an investor. You've been involved in, in Bitcoin since the early days, uh, yeah. moved into, into crypto. Uh, how do you feel about this news right now? If we were, you know, we're all over the place. I mean, uh, I don't know what to say, man. Um, you know, things in crypto happen when nobody expects them to happen. Like, who even knew that FTX was in trouble, right? If you'd ask me, like, if you'd ask me a few days ago, I'd say FTX might overtake Binance one day because they were doing such a great job with their marketing. And, you know, everybody says some is a genius and he probably is. It's, it's, it's kind of shocking to me, but, you know, CZ has proven over and over again that how important he is for, for the ecosystem in general um, and how stable Binance has been for all these years. And, you know, if it happens, I, I don't really know. I, I don't know how I feel about it, you know, about one company having everything. But at the same time, um, you know, CZ has been great for, 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 for the industry. Uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a very different situation. I've had, I spent a lot of time uh, talking to him over the years and, I just sent him a text message this morning after I read it, and I said, um, from blockchain to info till now, like, what a crazy road it's been, and we're toasting to you tonight. Because he, and this is like a lesson for everyone listening, he actually started in the industry in 2012 as the most junior developer at blockchain.info. That's how it That's how it starts. It That's right. It's Sorry, crazy. It's, it's crazy. You know, probably your listeners already know that. Like, I know of you since 2011. Like, I've, I know, you know, you guys were actually the leaders that started this whole movement. I remember everything with Bit Eastland and all that stuff. And, you know, that's how I got into Bitcoin co completely. I mean, we can talk about this later, but. No, let's talk about it now. Yeah. I, I, I got into the space out of, you know, out of complete, I don't want to say luck. Because, you know, there's a, like, it was like, an, I, I met somebody who just told me about it and I was 21 years old. I was like, what is that? So I, I did a little bit of research. There was very limited materials online back in the day. There was nothing yeah. really. I had, I had just moved uh, from Greece to um, Florida, to Miami, actually. And um, I remember I couldn't figure out how to download a desktop wallet to, to, to accept Bitcoin. And, you know, I've used everything. I've used the Electrum. I've used Liberty. I'd used, yeah. I, I even used uh, local Bitcoins a few times uh, <laughs> after 2012. When, I had you know, used like, that too. Yeah, I'm sure you have. <laughs> but it's been a crazy ride, man. It, it started with, you know, with, with a few cryptographers and a few just visionaries, I'd say. Like you were, you were and are one of those. Uh, you, probably started the first actual business. Yeah. 
I'm not well, it came out off of like a, a, a Bitcoin forums. It wasn't even meant to be like a business. Yeah. It was just started as three people or two or three people. Yeah. But it's so crazy how it ended up being. But, I, you know, back then we were all just having fun. It's it's I think it's like a very this has been such a pivotal year now in the in the industry. And uh, but speaking of local Bitcoins, you reminded me of a story when I actually had gotten out of jail. I needed to. uh uh, uh, I was working and the guy was paying me in Bitcoin yeah. and, um, it was actually for, for like you just said, Liberty. I worked, I was the COO of uh, Jack's wallet for, oh, I used for, to use Liberty. <laughs> yeah. I was, and Anthony DeOrio was actually launching a, a new project called, uh, Andiami. He just announced it yesterday. So I've got to have him back on the show and talk about it. But, um, he hired me, you know, and he, and, uh, so I needed to, 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 to sell some Bitcoin for cash. I went to local Bitcoin and, Guys, you know, had to, to send, I had to send the guy my driver's license and he, um, he said, you know, you can't, you can't trade. I'm sorry. You failed KYC. And then at the same time, I got an email like 30 minutes later from this guy separately saying, hello, Charlie Shrem. I found your email on the internet. Someone's pretending to be you selling Bitcoin. I just want to let you know. So the guy knew of me and I failed the KYC yeah, because he didn't think I was even out of jail yet or something. Yeah, yeah, so crazy. And you were like, "It's me." <laughs> Let me no, sell it. No, it's me. Yeah, we ended up becoming friends. You lived down here in Florida, so it worked out. So crazy. Um, it's really been crazy. So, what are you? What are you working on right now? What's what? What's going on? I mean, you you launched so many communities at this point. Um, you've been investing in some. Uh, yeah. Where do you think we go from here? Yeah. So you know, it took me like like I said when I started, it took me years to get actually educated. And you know, back in the day, none of us could really imagine. The potential of the space, right? And right now, look at that. Like, uh, look at what's happening. The trillion plus market. And I think in 10 years, it's going to be probably much bigger. Um, it's just too many applications. It's too many applications. And, and there's, there, there's too many cool things you can build and do um, on the blockchain. Um, I personally started my journey. I, I invested, obviously, in a lot of companies till 2017. And after I started, I wanted to start my own, my own uh, company. And the idea came when, when I first saw CryptoPunks, uh, um, when the guys um, gave away CryptoPunks. Um, I was like, holy S, yeah. that's crazy. You can now represent a digital image or a digital piece on the blockchain. Uh, I think that was like the game changer for me. And that's how the Eternity idea came to be. Um, we started with art. Uh, it took us about a year, a year and a half to figure out the legals. It was the, the toughest uh, part for us because we wanted to launch a, a token as we did. But we wanted to do it the right way. You know, we brought on board uh, Marco Santori, you, we pro you probably know, yeah. was our, 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 our um, legal advisor in the start. Um, he's uh, the chief legal officer for Kraken. So we did everything by the book. Um, but yeah, we started with, with the art pieces. We wanted to give a chance to creators and artists to showcase their work. And actually, while we were starting the company, NFT started blowing up. So it was like perfect timing for us. But we have already built all the technology, so it was like the perfect storm. So when we started, um, we did very well. We were one of the first companies, if not the first, to actually bring um, athletes and celebrities into the blockchain. I don't know. That, that's kind of cheesy these days because so many people have done it. They, they saw this um, opportunity as, as, as a big cascara. But when we were doing it, you know, we brought Leo Messi to do his first collection. Um, which oh, is like, that was you guys. That was amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember we, that. We actually, yeah, we're actually doing a huge one for the World Cup with him. Um, so we brought Leo Messi, the literally the biggest athlete in the world. And you know, now a lot of people have been doing it, but you know, we, our approach is completely different. You know, we besides art, you know, digital collectibles and and product market feed. I'd love to show you some stuff we're doing. Obviously, uh, with a Messi uh, thing. Actually, the announcement is this week. So, so congratulations on launching thank, that. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. I mean, it's 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 great. You know, we we have a pretty passionate community in, on the collectible side. So to clarify, so what Eternal Labs is right now, we're focusing into two things. And um, number one is digital collectibles, which that includes art, um, figurines, uh, trading cards. You know, and and you know, we're trying to do deals. You know, we've been talking to Amazon. We've been trying to do a deal with Warner Brothers. Um, not not there yet, but you know we've done over fifty drops with the biggest athletes and 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 entertainers in the world, from Leo Messi to 
uh, Sakil O'Neill. We have a deal with ABG for the Muhammad Ali rights, Merlin wow. Monroe rights. So we've done a lot of, of, of things with, with, with those licensors. Very successful, I'd like to believe. Um, our company did very well our first year. And what, what we did the second year is we started the Thermal Labs, which is actually our studio-like um, company. Uh, we went out there and raised $20 million as, as a seed round. Pretty big seed round for a seed round, but in crypto, you know, yeah, rounds look uh, <laughs> bigger. It depends than on the market company. too. Like it, yeah. bull, bull market, twenty million is a seed round. Bear market, exactly. twenty dollars. Yeah, I see fifty million dollars seed rounds. So <laughs> twenty million was kind of uh, okay, I guess. But yeah, we're we're so the second leg and layer we're focusing on, and that's something I'm personally leading on is is gaming. It, it's gaming with real economies. Yeah. Um, the Exorians is 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 is, is a great example because uh, the Exorians are first brand and we're really putting a lot of effort and energy into it. We yep. are creating. There is a lot of things that we're going to announce. I don't mind revealing some. So the Exorians is a, is, is 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 a very wholesome brand. Is you know it, it has a lore. The NFT aspect of the Exorians is literally the, the smallest aspect. We 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 we're aiming to create TV series. Um, we brought some amazing names. We're, we're launching our, our comic books um, February 1st. We'll announce the names. Very good writers. They've, some of them, one of them has been very involved into writing Batman for the past 20 years. Um, obviously, the NFT project, we want the community to be able to own the characters. And we're building a video game. Uh, one of our investors is Thomas Vu, who's um, built Sims. I don't know if you remember the game Sims. Yeah, of course. Like a pretty popular game. It was one of the best games as yeah. a kid. Was, yeah. League of Legends. League of Legends as well. Yeah. Huge, huge game. Um, Thomas has been advising us on our game building. We have our, our full-on in-house team um, building the, the Exorians uh, video game. But the main co- what's very important, what, what, why we're doing this uh, onto the blockchain is because I use always Fortnite as an example. Look at Fortnite. Great brand, amazing art. But what Fortnite does, it incentivizes a marketplace, but it doesn't really give any power to the to the creators, neither power to the community. You can buy cool stuff all day long, but you can't resell them. So that's fully blocking the community to making any funds on their purchases. If you look at my Fortnite account, because I've been testing Fortnite for the last two years, I own thousands of skins and weapons and all that stuff, but I can't resell them. Yeah. We've, we've, and, and I feel like I've had this conversation before too. It's like, it's same thing with, with every world of Warcraft and even Grand Theft Auto or, or any game, you know, like, first of all, congratulations. You have so much, you have so many different, uh, depart, like different, uh, yeah. uh, sub labs, right. Or different, uh, you know, uh, departments, if you will, or yeah. I don't even know what to call yeah, it. Like, like studios. It's like Eternity. It's to make it clear for those who are listening, it's Eternity with all its collectible and licensing that's doing partnerships and launches collectibles with the likes of Messi, ABG, and all these companies. And it is the Exorians universe, which is our first brand that consists of a video game, a comic book, a potential TV series in the future, an NFT project. So we have each person leading its department. I'm personally leading the game. Um, obviously, I oversee everything within the Exorians, but we have like a specialist uh, leading its 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 production. Uh, but the Exorians is literally our our biggest bet, and um, that's what we're we think we can build. Um, I don't want to say big words. We, we think we can build the next. Um, I won't say the next Fortnite uh, because yeah. this is a very hard thing to build. You're building a whole world, but you could you could, yeah. and a lot of these things. You said some powerful stuff earlier. You said the word community, and we can. We've, I spent a lot of time talking about that. We can dive into that in a little bit. There's, there's yeah. GameFi. There's the art-related NFT world. There's, you, you guys are doing so much. Yeah. And um, I, I wanted to ask about, specifically about gaming, because it seems yeah. like GameFi uh, and game finance uh, is the longer form of that, is where it's at right now. But um, I've talked to lar- a lot of these like larger game studios and they they come and they tell me the problem is that games will they they threat they they there's a fine line on play to earn because if a game becomes too much about the money and not about the game then uh the community is ruined and it becomes too much of the economy 
and a reseller bot type of universe. It's like a very fine thread. It's like walking, you know, like a tightrope. And I'm sure it exists. Same thing with a comic series and, and a film and, and with art and everything. So how do you know that, you know, how to walk that, that line? How do you know? So the, the way to do that, it, it shouldn't be, uh, it's, it, it's, it shouldn't be play to earn. It, it, it's, it should be play and earn. So it should be if you want to earn. Like it shouldn't be the first. The Exorians, our standards are Fortnite, or Rust and, 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 and No Man's Sky. Our, our standards are very high on how fun the game will be. And earning is secondary. I, I, but, but I'll give you a little example. If you look at Fortnite, Fortnite gives the gives the, the the ability to the best players on the game, or actually not the best players, the best YouTubers or the best promoters uh, yeah. on social media to make money. They go on Twitch, they get sponsorships, and a 0.1% makes a lot of money playing Fortnite. It's the same with, with the financial system. The 0.1% is rich and the rest is not, right? So why not give the, the, the ability to the best actually players on the best creators to make funds from a game? Because... As for the game is equally fun as Fortnite, we're going to keep using Fortnite as an example because I think everybody knows it and it's easy for people to understand yeah. what we mean. Um, yesterday, we were, we were playing Fortnite with a few friends and I was like, we wanted to upgrade our weapons. So, you know, they have these little upgrade weapon um, stations within the game. I was like, what if somebody could have a little store on its server and you could still sell your own upgrades or uh, you could give, you could have three artists have little shops within the map of Fortnite. And that's an individual artist, not a Fortnite artist. You can set up a shop. Obviously, the company has to pre-approve what's going to be sold, but let people make funds. You don't have to play Fortnite. Imagine having a little shop selling upgrades or selling skins within the server while you're playing, right? And now you bought this upgrade from somebody within the server and you can resell it to somebody else on the marketplace. Fortnite and any Fortnite will keep make, they will be making money just a smaller percentage of what they make right now. Because right now what they do is they go to Star Wars and they say, let's sell Darth Vader's, right? Which is fine. We want this as well. And I bought it. I can't make any money on, on that. And they're limited series. And you should, I want to buy Darth Vader right now. And I can't because it expired. They won't sell it again, right? What if I wanted to? So you and I don't see any of that becoming... Uh, and you you, you, know, you know very well in the blockchain yeah. you can limit. You can say one per wallet. You can you, there is a lot of things you can do. And and uh, and I'm, I'm very oh, yeah pro, yeah. And I'm I, very pro identity. I'm not um, on a game like that. You'll when somebody has an account, you'll definitely need to know who this person is because you want to avoid bots and all this bot buying you were mentioning earlier. You don't want a thousand bots go and buy all the thousand Darth Vader's that are for sale. And after they're they're selling them for crazy amounts of money, obviously. Um, it's a fine line, but I do think you, you, you can make it happen. And especially those big companies, they're very negative into creating economies within their games. And I don't think the reason is because they think the games will become all about the money. I think because the revenues will, will change. And That's a very good point. Yeah. And that's a very good point. And I want to really push more into that because it's not just about video games. It's everything. It's how I monetize this podcast. It's how... NFTs and artists work. It's how music and movies and TV, it's how it's all going to work in the future and interact with each other. And it needs to be figured out. And to throw it back on you, I think the answer is curation. Because going back to your analogy, you're in the game, you're playing last night, you're in the game, and you want to go up and say, hey, why aren't, is there not a little market Some of front, stores, yeah. right? Because no one is doubting, I think, that this ha would have global implications. You're talking about equal, like completely leveling the playing field for anyone anywhere in the world to like have a new business. It doesn't matter like who yeah. they are, where they are, what they are, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that. I think it comes down to curation. It's like these, these massive gaming studios and massive film studios and music and, and everyone that creates any type of content that we consume on any day, they just didn't have the technology to like allow what you said to flourish without yeah. preventing like scams and bots and frauds, like, yeah. like an app store type of thing. They need, yeah. and now they can't. So why does the blockchain give those, give you the ability to actually create these economies, but while maintaining like a really good game or a really yeah, good I mean, show or a really good song? 
it, it, it's definitely possible. And, and because I'll tell you that, because we have a lot of meetings with these big studios and these big gaming companies. I've, I've literally spoken to every single company out there. I don't think there is a gaming studio or a, or, or a licensing or a, or, or, a, or a movie or a film studio that I haven't spoken to. From Warner Brothers to Amazon, I've spoken to everybody. And, and, and the majority, I'd like to say, are very open-minded and yeah. in actually getting into that. Obviously, they don't understand it well. They're just building their strategies and their teams. But a lot of them who they do understand, some of them that do understand it, when they see the revenue chains and how much money actually now people will start making and how much they won't be able to put on their books because you're not the only one selling right now. You can sell as many things as you want, but if there's a great unknown artist from Singapore or from Senegal that's just very good at building schemes for Fortnite and creates a subfront and his things are the coolest things that that there yeah. is, everybody's going to be buying from him, right? So that's not an in-house thing. You're still making 20%, but you got to give up that or 10% or whatever you're going to charge. But you're still now giving up a large amount to this kid that's very talented. But to me, I see this as an opportunity. I prefer to make, because that's the reason I got very excited with the blockchain is the decentralization part and giving, giving an opportunity. Because I'm, I'm coming from Greece. I'm not, I'm, I was born in a middle-class family and, and I, I knew how hard it was to, I had to move to the U.S. to have opportunities, equal opportunities, or better opportunities that I would have back in yeah. Europe. Because Europe is way, way tougher than here. Here, the opportunities are, are way more, right? But imagine how tough is some countries in Asia or some countries in, in Africa, right? So why not give equal opportunities to everybody? If you're talented, there's a vehicle for you to, 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 to build a career out of wherever you are. Um, so, so I think gaming companies and studios can make that happen in, in a heartbeat. The technology is out there right now. A lot of companies like us uh, are very skillful and they're building te similar technologies. And I feel there's going to be the, the companies that are willing to adapt it that can give massive opportunities to the community. And I call the community the whole world. Anyone can be part of, of, of a community. And it doesn't have to be gaming, like you said. It can be music. It can be art. It can be, it can be anything. Hey, guys. We've been talking about Bing X for the last few months. Super cool social copy trading platform where you can trade all sorts of cryptocurrencies, follow other traders, see their historical uh, uh, averages, how they've been doing and, you know, follow or unfollow different people and all their trades 24 seven. And what's cool about Bing X, other than the, the free money, which I'll talk to in a second that they're offering just to my listeners, but they also offer this super cool strategy that's like a spot grid. And they just launched like last week, this, how do I explain it? A really, really cool strategy that now that I understand it, it's called an infinity grid and it's designed to avoid us missing out on the trending market when the prices start to run high, especially when we're not trading and we're not sleeping. You should go check it out. All the links are, are below. And don't forget, they're also offering a 125 USDT new user reward. So if you're a new user, click the link below, uh, go to Bing X and you get that free money. And on top of that, if you try out their social uh, uh, trading uh, platform and the different copy trading, if you lose $30, they're actually going to repay you back those $30. All the information is below. Check them out. Thank you guys for sponsoring the show. And thanks for my listeners for for helping uh, our sponsors out. Thank you. So you have these communities that exist. Like the I looked at a chart yesterday. It showed like the top 10 like grossing brands of all time, like Hello Kitty, Toy Story, like all like Disney, all this stuff, like uh, uh, Star Wars. And these have like massive million person plus communities around the world mm -hmm. that, that, that aren't connected at all, right? And so now you're offering these brands a way to like connect their community through almost like decentralized mapping together. Or do you like that better? Are you having more fun doing that? Or do you like starting them from scratch, like with the Exorians? I like both, um, to be honest. So that's why we, that's the two things we're doing. Like I said, Ethereum is focusing more on do the brands. How do we connect those brands on the blockchain? And, and so the Exorians, in terms as speaking as a CEO, the Exorians will be much more profitable for us as a company because we own the whole thing and we're building it from scratch. And it's way more fun because... I can show you some stuff after we finish the podcast because those are not public yet. We've started everything from, you know, our artists started painting how the spaceships are going to look, how the characters are going to look. And if I show you now, they have a 3D. So it's very fun to build something from nothing, right? It, it's just, yeah. 
way more fun. But at the same time, it's really cool taking a brand or, or, or a huge name like Lionel Messi, who has 500, 600 million followers all over social media. It's much easier to, 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 to take that. That's already huge. Like Messi will do, make, makes one post and you got yeah. 500,000 people on, on already. And both have its own, because, you know, the people are passionate with, 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 with athletes and, and, and brands and like the Hello Kitty, like you said, and, and Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, fan myself. Um, they're both fun. I prefer, I'm, I'm, that's why the reason I'm leading the Exorians, because ha- I'm having more fun doing uh, the original stuff. Because, you yeah. know, much more freedom, you know, it's tokenized. We're building a, a, a DeFi economy there as well with, with care, obviously. You know, we have our own token. Um, potentially a second token when the next game is ready. You know, we we waited to do that because you know I've been stud- I've been studying Axie Infinity since 2019. I've been studying them so much, and 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 I really admire the guys. I think they've built they they were the front runners uh, yeah. on the whole play to earn thing. But what what I've been doing is I've been studying a lot of games that launched early, and I've been like seeing the mistakes and what they've did well and why they didn't do well. So, you know, it, it's great having examples before you, you know. And the most successful things are not the ones that started first. It's actually the ones that looked what, like, look at MySpace, Facebook, for example. Yeah, you looked at the other yeah. ones and, like, yeah. figure. Well, on that note, like, and that's kind of something that I've been struggling with, too, because, uh, and speaking of, of films, uh, a movie that I made uh, that is starring my wife, actually, called, it's a romantic comedy. It's really, really funny. I've talked about it on the show before. It's called Ask Me to Dance. We had a limited release in like 50 cities theatrical over the last few weeks, and it was very successful. Today, it's on streaming. Uh, That's amazing. Anyone go all over the world. It's on like a dozen or so different platforms, wherever, whatever country you're in, uh, from Amazon to Vudu and Redbox and Dish and DirecTV and everything. Enjoy it. Please go go, go check it out. It's, I have a little cameo in there with Kurt Angle, cool. a, famous, a famous wrestler. So it's a lot of fun. But That's like cool. being involved in the, in the movie making process uh, and this film is the farthest from crypto that from Bitcoin and crypto is literally a fun movie about dating nowadays. I uh, love the it's, it. a, it's like super bad. It mixes with office space. And, and so it's like we kind of joked while we were in the early days of this film, we're like, hey, let's, you know, do an NFT or do something crypto. And I'm like. Yeah. You know, been in this community a long time. I'm sitting there and I slap my head against my hand against my head and I'm like, what what can you do? Like there's no you do do you do you write the 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 financialness into the film or the TV or the game? How do you like not ruin an amazing potential comic book series by creating some sort of like economy from the beginning? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. You know, funny enough, I almost started the film there. I will eventually, I think, like a Let's little side. Uh, I think you'd be a great person to. You know why? So, on my um, rewild stuff and global wildlife conservation stuff, you know, I've done a lot of things for the environment. I'm friendly with an actor who's um, very big into leading uh, cl- uh, anti climate change and, and all that, and he's on the same company. Uh, he's he's it's his foundation. Leonardo DiCaprio, oh, wow. and he's, he's the the head of uh, Ray Wild. He, it's, it's it's his foundation. So, um, me and he met the uh, one of the we met Chief Raoni, who was nominated for the um, for the um, Nobel Peace Prize. We met him here in LA. We brought him from Brazil. We had a meeting with him, um, um, and with so he's doing a documentary about the Amazon. And I thought, why not fund this documentary? Do a little film DAO. Yeah, and I still have time to do it, but eventually I, I will. Because I have access to all these um, cool documentaries that's being made, uh, but 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 why not? I love films a lot. I love watching films, so um, I think a little small film community would be a lot of fun to be part of, a, a big part of. And you know, you get a thousand people they love films, and we do a little DAO, tokenized DAO, and we all together fund films, right? And we get to to to, to like to like vote what where the next film is gonna be, or we get to watch the first the film ourselves first, and. That was a little idea I had on the side. I'll, I'll, I'll do it eventually. Uh, but yeah, I think a film that will be very, very cool. What's the relationship? Are we talking about influencing the storyline? No, because the documentary can't really be influenced. Uh, okay. But if it, so, my for me, that was like not to make money. Like, I wouldn't, like, let's say you get a thousand people together, let's all put five bucks, I'm just saying a random number, and get a million dollars and, and do a film. 
Um, mostly I do that because I want to help and I want these issues for the environment to be sown. Uh, so it's not going to be really an investment. It's going to be more of a donation. Now, you know, you make some of the money back, fine. If not, it's it's okay. You have a little community. And in the end of the day, you were part of a very important film about the Amazon or about, about you know, other rainforests or about other climate issues that are, are, are out there. And, um, you know, you get to do some cool things, meet some cool people from home, from, from, the, from the industry and get to learn and show other people those issues. Now, if it was to be a film down for profit, that's doable. Okay. Um, very doable. You'd have to figure out the legals because let's say you get a thousand investors to invest in your film. This is an investment. So then you, you have a tokenized investment that has to go through the SEC. It's kind of having a public company, but it's, it's doable. Everything is doable. Um, but I, I know a lot about the subject. We can talk about it if you want. Um, but it's, yeah. it's a good idea, I feel. I think it is. there's a blockbuster doubt too. You want to know something funny? I tried to... I try to uh, speak to, with this to buy Blockbuster. You know, you remember Blockbuster? The yeah. DVD? They have one store left. So that was my idea. My idea was like, I'm saying it public because it's not going to happen. Because I'm not. They're selling. trying to do it. The Blockbuster DAO. I met the guy is. Uh, so I he, yeah. He so I tried the- to buy it before, way before them. I tried to do that. I tried to buy Blockbuster way before them. I had conversations with them. When Blockbuster was like nothing, they were like. And they what were happened? Like, Why Dish Network owns selling. it, right? They're not, they know. They understand that they're never going to sell it. They they understand the, um, the value of the brand. I spoke with them with them many yeah, times. Yeah, but it dies off over time. They have to do they something. Don't care. You know why why they don't care? Because they're it's such a big, big company dish and they can see this nostalgia trend that's always going to be here. You know, we all grew up with Blockbuster. Eventually, they'll have to do something about it. So that was my idea to do like a Blockbuster Netflix, a decentralized Netflix. Yeah, they don't want to do that. They're going to do something. But let me ask you, do you think there was a Netflix series just that just was released called Blockbuster? Do you think Dish licensed the brand to make that TV show? They probably got paid the licensing fee. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. So they are doing stuff with it, but it's like they want to do... Yeah, it it loses money. They bought it. I don't remember for how much I had all these numbers. I spent quite some time trying to do that. Right before I started, it turned into 2000. 819, I think I started getting into the blockbuster idea, but it didn't work. But you know, I spoke to some great people in there and the ex CEO. Um, you know, eventually they'll have, I think this would be open to um, do something in partnership with somebody else. Uh, but you know, pa- partnering with companies such as this is it limits you from doing a lot of the crypto stuff we like doing, uh, like launching a DAO and getting thousands of people you don't know. With no KYCs to vote on films and or have accounts, you know, starting a crypto, you know this better than me. Starting a crypto company or crypto related company or crypto related products, it's still hard. You know, even the SEC or the regulators doesn't have a clear plan of what is all what all that is, right? So that's why we're still in the infancy of the space. I think in 10, 15 years, <laughs> what we see now will be much different. I wanted to give a super good congratulations to our amazing sponsor, Angel Block, on the launch of the Angel Block Protocol. Congratulations, guys. I know it's a long time coming. Um, it's hard work, especially building in a bear market. And we've been talking about Angel Block for a while. But for those who don't know, uh, if you're a, a crypto investor, the Angel Block Protocol allows for non custodial and on chain fundraising, transparent vesting, and automated token distribution. You could invest in startups, DAOs, protocols, multiple chains, agnostics, all these different things, but with increased security, post-raise governance, which for me is huge, milestones for funding, regulatory compliance, on-chain transparency. Now, on the other side, if you're a startup, you want to be on the other side of that because they can help you build out all of your technologies from your NFTs to your tokens. They have a huge community that everyone loves to be a part of. Uh, receive advisory and mentoring, legal, legal, strategic, technical, operations support, access to cap table management. I mean, this is the Web3 version of how fundraising and investing will take place. Angel Block Protocol, thank you guys for supporting my show and I hope you guys enjoy. I want to make untold stories into a DAO and just... I think it's cool. And just break it up into like... A million pieces and just give everyone for free, like to all the listeners, just like yeah. a free piece of the future revenue. But 
I don't, I don't even know where to begin. You need like, an attorney for that, for sure. What, what did you <laughs> say? You need an attorney for that, for sure, to build the I have the a model. lot of attorneys, but they don't even I'm know what sure. to do. I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> but you def- you'll definitely, that's completely like a monetary vehicle that pays out dividends. So you definitely have to register with that. Yeah, 100%. But I think that's the future right there. Like that's where you can go to the next level. Imagine when you can actually, so you're talking about like creating so what you have to do right now, and, and, and I'm really bringing this back, the difference and why we need regulations. What you have to do is you have to create these communities from scratch or tap into existing, either it's like game or content that's not financial related. And you're creating yeah. these value adds for these existing communities like merchandise would be or like a DVD would be. But you, you still, it's still like scary to do something DeFi or like royalties or yeah. or actual like uh like like a film dow or like actual like messy or someone like that passing on some of their revenue onto their t- I know there are like a Chili's and a bunch of these other companies are doing things like this and they're trying they're trying to do it but it's, there's no just no regulations around this and so it's yeah, very I mean, you, scary to do yeah. it and i think it's stopping people from wanting to do fine it fine line it's a fine line you have to spend a lot of fun, money in attorneys and they don't even know like yeah, they'll tell you <laughs> there is no clear guidelines from any financial vehicle within around the world like i mean that's why people go and start companies offshore or they go start companies of the uh, bvi or the because there's no other way to do it unfortunately because the sec will wake up one day and say hey you've been making millions of dollars selling or you've been paying people millions of dollars that you don't even know who they are you know to trade stocks you have to be and you have to have your id your address there your social security number but you know that's what's blocking a little bit you know we want to do, we all of us want to do business globally. We don't want to be um, constrained by one country, right? And, but the way the world works, every country has its own laws. And unfortunately, that's why there is Binance US and Binance Worldwide and FTX yeah. US, and FTX Worldwide, because there's different laws in, in, in it's, it's a mess, but it's, it's part of what, we're, what we do, right? We, we're, we're very lucky to be involved in, in, an, in an industry like that that's brand new. You know, not a lot of people get a chance to build from, to an industry that's literally on, the, on its infancy. So I, I'm actually, even with all the difficulties, I feel pretty blessed and, and, and happy that I get to be part of, of, of the industry. Oh, yeah. And you got, this is so new and so early. You have decades to come. I don't even know what metaverses right now are people actually engaging in on like a really large scale uh, decentralized sandbox? Are you kind of tapped into this? Yeah, but I have a slightly different opinion that I, I spoke about this at the NFT LA conference and people, I, my, the rest of the panel was like, what the hell? And Okay, you know, let's, I want to hear this. Yeah, but, please. but people were like clapping underneath. So I was like, okay, I know what people want because I feel the metaverse term is kind of overused and I think it's more of a marketing term because when I ask people who say metaverse, 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 what the metaverse is, explain to me, they don't really have an answer Um, because what is the metaverse, right? (laughs) I don't even know. Exactly. We try to define it. It's taking us over 100 episodes still to define it. I'll tell you exactly what the metaverse is so people know and people disagree with me, but the metaverse... Typically, is 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 a shared is an online shared experience that you can share with people you don't know, or with your friends, or with with anyone. Right? That's exactly what the metaverse is. Um, being on a marketplace, um, either is a Web two marketplace or a Web three marketplace. It's being in the metaverse, uh, playing a video game and speaking through your headphones with your mic to people. It's being in the metaverse. Having a person having a subfront on a game is being in the metaverse. Yep. It's an online shared experience. That's it. Uh, people made it as, as easy. Like, it doesn't have to be a full. People think, okay, the reality that we live today here in the world, transformed to a computer, this is the metaverse. I don't think that's the metaverse. That's just a game with multiple applications that you can sell and buy things. With. It, it, it's literally a video game. A video game or it's as simple as a, as, as a FaceTime call on your phone. That's, it's a digital online experience. Um, have you ever tried the Central Land? I mean, I went into it one time and played around a little bit. They had a fashion show not yeah. too long ago, but what's the difference with Fortnite? I, it's it's still like Second Life. Like I played Second Life ten years ago. It still looks exactly. like Second Life. So, so that's a great answer because the metaverse <laughs> has been around since 
10 years ago. That's exactly the answer. Longer. It's fucking new. Longer. I know the creator of, of Second Life and he's to me, the older the guy now. To me, the metaverse exists since I could FaceTime people and I could like, sir, I could do group FaceTimes with my parents and friends. What is this right now? I'm in the United States and they're in Greece and my other friend is in France and we're all FaceTiming. Yeah. That's a digital shared experience and that's what the metaverse is. Everything else is just marketing. Um, just marketing to promote a product. And I have like a higher standard even like that. By the way, the creator of Second Life, Philip, he's he probably listening to this show. You're not old. I love you. You're amazing. Um, uh, I didn't mean to, to say that, but, um, yeah. no, I have an even higher standard. Um, to me, something's not a metaverse unless, and there's nothing really yet. And I don't even know if Decentraland or Sandbox or anything is even at the level yet, but nah. that, and I love the guys and I love the guys yeah, and, but, and, and we have, we have worlds, eternity worlds in both of them. They're great. They're great visionaries, but they should have been calling the, the companies, the metaverse companies, because that's not what, what they are. The true building. metaverse yeah. is one that is going to exist in real time. So when you go to sleep and you wake up, it's the time is, is the same thing in the real world. It's 24 hours. And all the servers and the data and everything that happens, every transaction is happening on a blockchain, whether it's like IPFS or some new technology. But everything is, is existing on an immutable, non-reversible, non-censorable blockchain, yeah. including... And I would prefer... I, I, I'd call this a simulation, not the metaverse. <laughs> Yeah, that would be even that would like same because imagine in that world, imagine like that store selling those skins. Now that's actual real estate because no one can take that away from him or her yeah. in India or wherever that person is. Yeah, there's no server that it sits on owned by a gaming company. Yeah, now you yeah. can pretend you're building an asset that you can sell. My yeah. show now, I can build it as an asset. It's not just like a fleeting thing that exists yeah. over like a temporary. It's like the difference yeah. between like short-term memory and long-term memory so like it's so the simulation verdict, change yeah, everything so the verdict the verdict for people to understand in my and that's my opinion because a lot of people disagree is the metaverse already exists in in games and all these games you're playing world of warcraft there's a metaverse there people have certain experiences the decentral what what sandbox and, and decentraland are trying to do is they're trying to build a decentralized metaverse that's the difference because everything is on the blockchain but it's still a certain experience there's nothing different compared to, to, to actual video games that are out there right now. Um, and obviously, we're all, all in for the decentralized metaverse. Because um, let's say World of Warcraft or Blizzard goes bankrupt, to bankrupt tomorrow, all the assets you purchased within the years are lost, right? But when some, if, if Sandbox goes bankrupt tomorrow, you still have the, the collectibles on your, on that's your wallet. The whole, anything that's you the bought. whole point. Yeah. But and still, think, you need yeah. interoperability after. You need... A third, you need after Decentraland to accept sandbox collectibles to be able to use them. Otherwise, they're just sitting on your wallet, right? So there, there is always going to be need for central authorities, how the world works. But, but what the blockchain technology does is it gives us a better way to, it, it gives us transparency across data and it gives us a way to actually vote fairly for who we want to be the central authority, right? Because, like, let's say you always need a Charlie or a Nick or a or a or a or a or a, or a, or a Lewis to run a company. You always need that. You can't have anything without somebody waking up in the morning, having their team call, and saying, "Okay, guys, here's what we're doing. Here, what here's that the plan." But these people need to these executives need to serve the people, not to serve their pockets. That's that's the whole difference between um, between decentralization and and, and yeah. private companies. You're a hundred percent right. I. Nick Rose, thank you so much for coming on Untold Stories today. You're a hundred percent right. Yeah, we'll do this again. Uh, whenever we have news with the Exorians, I'll, I'll show you some cool stuff. <laughs>